In the following set of tutorials, we're going to take a look at mobile interface design. Now, this is a field that's expanding rapidly right now as we have all these new smartphones come out and all these other devices, tablets, Android tablets and um, Apple tablets. But I've, you've got a, a number of different competitors in the field right now. And here's four of those competitors. We have Apple. Um, this is a Palm. This is a, a Blackberry. And this is an Android phone. These are kind of old uh, models at this point. But there are also lots of other competitors out there in the field. There's tons of different devices. And one of the things that you notice with all these devices is they all have a slightly different way of interacting and um, they also have slightly different screen sizes. However, right now we're really making a push towards these um, touch screen interfaces that are being popularized by Apple and Android and, and some of the other competitors. But there are principles behind designing for these screen sizes. So I'm going to go through this one real quick. And it's a little redundant in a couple places, but um, there's still some good information. The first thing is to always meet the user's needs quickly. People need to be able to know what this content is on the page and what they need to do with it quickly. Now that's basically one of the main goals of any mobile interface. And how we do that are things such as this. Don't repeat the navigation on every page. We don't need all the navigation everywhere. The reason why is because the screen real estate is precious. So like up here, you'll notice we have all this navigation. We don't need any of that. All we want is which page can we go to, and if it's not the right page, how can we get back to where we were before? So this is where back and next buttons become more important. We also want to clearly distinguish selected items. We want to know what's selected and what's current um, and possibly how we can get back, of course. We want, want to make the user input as simple as possible. So that means that we want to make our buttons large and we want to make things very easy for them to understand. We want to use icons that they understand, ones that match their mental model, and we want to make our text nice and legible. Um, we want to show only a, the essential information, and that is, since we're on a small screen, let's only show the content for what we're actually dealing with right now. Let's not show content for everything else. It means that we have to break up our content into multiple pages sometimes when um, one page isn't enough. We want to place only basic browsing controls on the page. This is that back, next, up, down, those types of things, instead of a list of lots of items. And we also want to design mobile-friendly layouts. We want to be aware of screen size. We want to be aware of um, resolution on the screen. We want to be um, aware of the height and width that we might be dealing with. And we want to make sure that um, our text is going to flow correctly on that screen. And so that's basically it for those. Um, there are other things, of course, that are important as well, and that is this idea of knowing your user and what they expect. Now, every user um, on different devices is going to expect something else, and we'll see that in just a second. They're going to expect something different between an Android device versus an iPhone device. Um, we need to be aware of the metaphors that are used on those devices, like what the home page icon looks like, what the call button looks like, what um, other helpful icons might look like. And we want to make sure that we use that. Um, this will be um, most effective for the navigation, um, meaning that what do menus look like? What do dialog boxes look like? What do check boxes look like? Then we also want to make sure that um, the graphics that we use are nice quality. We want to make sure that they're going to give us the right type of um, interaction. We want to make sure that we're using tables and charts and maps and diagrams when important. Um, and of course, the basic visual design is always going to be important. So in, in uh, I guess, an overall view of all mobile devices is that mobile interface should design should be easy to use, responsive, intuitive, but also visually exciting and visually stimulating. So how do we do this? We can use lots of different software out there, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Flash even, as well as possibly even fireworks. You'll find tons of tutorials out there. This is just one that says, hey, let's design something in fireworks. And you'll see the design looks pretty good. And they've got some nice controls like 
um, using arrows and such here. And as we get into mobile devices that are touch screens, we get into a little bit different design than even what we see here. And we'll talk about that later. So once you've kind of come up with some ideas of what your application should be, you should definitely do some mock-up sketches. Now the reason why you want to sketch is because it's the easiest way for you to figure out what things should look like and where they should go and how to break up all your content into multiple screens. An example of a student um, mock-up right here is for Planet Pizza and they've got their buttons for where we're going to go and they've got their main buttons here and you can see there's basically a um, workflow that they've they've um, created in this mock-up. Now they're not great drawings here but that doesn't always matter. What matters is that we've got an understanding of how we're going to split out our graphics into different screens. Once we've kind of figured that out then we need to start designing in whatever software we choose. One of the things that we might consider doing is finding templates. And there are templates for all sorts of stuff. Here's iPhone vector templates. And some people say that you should use um, vector because it's a little bit cleaner. You can find the ultimate, let's see, the ultimate iPhone stencil here. There's lots of different ones. I think that's the same one. Then we've got uh, maybe some Photoshop files, and this is still for iPhone. Here's another one for iPhone, which is just about mockups, just very simple mockups. And of course, these exist for all the other platforms, such as here are Photoshop documents for Android. So lots of different ones, and you can use all these different um, stencils. Now, or design templates. It's not to say that um, Photoshop is the best one, even though you're probably going to find more Photoshop templates than others. It's just because that's the way people are used to designing things. You're going to discover in the tutorials as I do them that I think for the purposes of our um, project in Catalyst that Flash is probably the best design environment. And you'll see why in the next tutorials. So go on and we'll take a look at that.